there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to play with some cotton paper. This is a round Arteza pad of cotton paper. And I'm also using the new Paul Rubens Opaque Watercolors. They are, I'm actually in the process of reviewing them. The review may be out already by the time this video goes up, I'm not sure. But um, they're touted as kind of like a hybrid. You can use like gouache, you can use like watercolors. And I'm just kind of doing a loose floral here to see how they handle. I'm going to start off by diluting some of this paint. Now I have dried it down onto my palette, so it rewets fine. I squeezed this out a couple days ago, and they dried pretty quick. And I don't have any like they're not cracking and falling out. I do see a little bit of cracking in there, but nothing too uh, too serious. This color is opera. It's not as neon as the color they just call pink there. I think I want to deepen that up a little bit more, so I'm going to go into this crimson, I think this is Crimson Lake. Get a little bit of that in there. Okay, and I think I want kind of like a peachy color, so I'm going to grab some lemon yellow. Just kind of water this down so I have kind of like a flowy. Actually, I, maybe I'll add some of that pink in there because one of these, I think the opera granulated, was it the opera that granulated or this pink? I can't remember. That pink is really neon though. I think it'll be kind of pretty. All right, and I'm using my, um, my half inch cat's tongue brush here. It's one of my signature brushes with craft ammo. Now I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna start off with a rose kind of off center here with this thinner paint. I'm just using the tip of the brush And I'm going to uh, press down a little bit more as I work away and give it some more natural looking petals. I love a cat's tongue for this sort of, um, this sort of project. So what I'm doing here is I just kind of want to make a path for other pigments as well. Okay, I kind of like the way that looks. So I'm actually going to go right into that, uh, that crimson, then pick up some of that Opera, and I'm going to go back into the center and just kind of sketch some petals. And I'm using my brush straight up and down, so hopefully my hand isn't in the way. I'll tip my paper a little bit so you can see. When I want those fine, those fine lines, I will go in just on the tip of my brush. And I like to have the color concentrated a little bit more in the center because generally you're going to have uh, the petals kind of closer packed in the middle, and then they'll kind of uh, spread apart a little bit. So I'm just trying to test the flow and see how um, how things want to flow. I feel like I need another petal over there maybe. Hmm. I'm gonna do another one. I'm not like, I don't feel like I had a lot of flow there, but maybe I just didn't have, maybe I didn't work fast enough. So I'm gonna try this again. This one I'll do a little bit more pink, but I want it pretty watery. And this time, maybe I won't do as much in the center until I get in with a darker color. I just wanna really sop up as much of that water as I can. It'll have a little bit of pink in there for you to be able to tell what I'm doing. Kind of a little bit of a side view rose here. A little curled petal over there, kind of. Just want to nestle it in. And now let me get into the opera, let me get into that crimson, and do the detail here. Let me just tip that up. Hopefully that's easier for you to see. My hand won't be in the way. I really want the opera in there because I think that's really going to be pretty. The light fast info on these paints are a little dubious at best, so I'm not going to I'm not going to worry about these like lasting forever. Basically, the this is just going to kind of a quick and fun little experiment that I'm doing. Hmm, not a ton of flow, I got to say. Uh, I'm going to do. 
one more. I think I'll do one more up there. Um, maybe I'll try this pink here as my kind of really watery base color. And I'm just going to kind of do it like kind of it's facing the side, got a little, kind of like a full, I wouldn't say a rosebud, but it's not a fully opened rose yet. We'll just put that up like that. Uh, I'll go in with the opera again, go in with the, with the red, and let's see. I had my outside door open yesterday, and there's a fly buzzing in here. It's kind of driving me bananas. <laughs> Okay, I want to put some other stuff in here too, so I just want to get kind of that little little edge of a flower. Now I want to put in some leaves. Let's see how the green does. This is a really pretty olive green. Some of these colors have granulating, granulating pigments in them, but I haven't seen a lot of like uh, really substantial granulation anywhere. I think I also need like more of a more of a brighter green. I'm gonna use the palette over here. Maybe add some of this Viridian. These are opaque or semi-opaque colors. They're actually all say opaque on the label, but um, they are kind of like um, like a, I would say semi-opaque. They don't seem as opaque as gouache, but they don't seem as definitely not as transparent as watercolor. I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow orangey color and add that in. I think that's that's nice. Okay, let's see. Turn this around. I just want to add a few little uh, few little leaves. Maybe add one here with that darker color. Got a little bleed there. I'm going to blot that up because that's more than what I want there. fill that area in and then drop some paint in it and we'll see how it does. Let's drop in some Prussian blue. Yeah, I don't see these to be all that fluid in water. I was skeptical I was skeptical about that claim. And it looks like I was right to be skeptical, but let's keep on doing and see what we get. More more paint on our brush there. Put a couple more leaves and then we're going to fill in with some other flowers. These are kind of an unusual leaf to put with a rose, but I wanted to see what I could do with this, with this brush here. Can make it a little fatter, kind of come back down the other side with it if you want. Hmm, maybe I'll try some of this blue. Let's see how that goes. Oh, that seems... No, I don't like that. That's a little muddy. We'll keep going, going with the Prussian blue. Add a little bit of that in there and see what it does. Let's see. What other flower could we add? Maybe some little daisies. Um, maybe some purple daisies. 
got this kind of lavender color. I'm add some of that in there. That flies drive me nuts. <laughs> and I'm going to add some of that bright pink into that purple. Kind of cross pollinate that. And let's just let's just make some little daisies. Some from the side. Maybe add in some of this powdery blue color. Add some of the pink in on its own. Some more of that lavender. The first color I put down, I usually put down pretty watery, and then the uh, the next colors I'll just kind of drip in there and let them flow. Um, do a few over here. Actually, I could start with the blue. Get a nice variety going. These are, well, these are colors I don't typically use, which I think is kind of fun when you find like um, that's really watery. It might be a little too much. Um, when you find a, a paint set or something, it's just a completely different color palette than you typically typically would use. That can be fun because it just breaks you out of your comfort zone a little bit. Roses are something I like to test when I do um, when I do get new, I have that two, I think I have that two wexy, I was just kind of like blobbing. Roses are fun to test though because you can uh, see how things flow and I don't know, they're always kind of fun I think. I think you can always stick them on a card or make a bookmark out of them. Uh, a little more lavender in there. I might throw um, more flowers in there, but I just wanted to get something in there for a... for a little filler. All right, now, I'd like to have something yellow in there too, I think. Hmm. I need some like little, uh, I don't know, little yellow mums or something. I don't like how I have that kind of like all blocky. I don't like the way that looks. Ah. But honestly, I usually don't like the way these look until like the next day, so I'm not going to worry about it. If you like loose florals, I do have a class on doing loose florals in watercolor. It's called Watercolor Flower Workshop, and I will leave a 30% off coupon code in the video description if you are curious about that. All right. I think I'll add a little bit of... Um, a little bit of opera into those mums, give them a little bit of, a little bit of structure and kind of cross pollinate them with the, I, I'm going to make this into a couple different flowers, I think.
like with most paints, the red seems to flow a little bit better. All right, let's go with some more green. Um, let's do that Viridian and Um, oh, you know what? Let's do the Viridian and that blue color that we used. Make us kind of like a little bit of a teal. That might be kind of cool. All right, now let's see. Maybe do some... That's, that might need to be a little bit waterier, more watery. I might want to switch around for this. Yeah, I think I will switch to around. Let's see. Trouble with going in a circle is trying to figure out where your, your stems are going to be coming from. And organizing it all. I like that uh, watery. Maybe I just want to put a background in with some of that watery. You know what? I think I like that idea. I think I like that idea. I think I'm just going to go in. Let's see. I'm going to mix up some more of that. I think I like that idea. And like I said, I'm not worried about the... Uh, I'm not worried about the painting, I'm just playing around having fun. Maybe I will go back to that cat's tongue brush because that will hold more water. a little bit of the more earthy green right at the base of that flower. Get into that olive too even. But I like the idea of the um, of the greens and the lavenders. Maybe even some of this brighter color. This is an uh, intuitive type of painting. And I mean, I want to test the flow, so this is a great way to test the flow. a nice way to uh, soften out some areas if you're not happy with the way something is like those leaves are okay but I don't really like that shape that well so I'm just gonna go right over those leaves let that flower fade out a little bit and then I can do some of this in here Ooh, that one has some good flow. No, look at them, they want to push against each other. Cleaning my brush uh, in between so I don't have 
um, too much mud. And yeah, especially when you have so much white in your paint, these um, these colors have a lot of white in them. So so you don't want to over mix. But I think I think they're gonna work for this. I think this this painting is gonna come out kind of pretty actually. I'm not crazy about the hard edge there, but um, I don't know what I'll be able to do about that at this point because those paint those have already dried. I could go and I could wipe out some of the color, but I also like that contrast though. So maybe maybe just kind of pull the color in a little bit. Or maybe even add some of go with those exterior petals a little bit and integrate them. A cotton paper is really nice for this type of thing because um, it'll stay wetter a little bit longer, so you have that little bit of forgiveness of working um, working back in. Give it a little bit stronger of color, I think. You don't have to be racing against the clock when you have cotton paper. I'm not sure how that's going to dry, how I'm going to like it, but you never know unless you try. It looks like I'm gonna get granulation. I don't. Sometimes it looks that way, and then when things dry, it doesn't happen. I love the turquoise next to that. Um, I'm gonna go right over that leaf. I think I like the turquoise next to that. Next to that orange, I think that's really pretty. And I like that kind of fading off into nothing there. Um, when you see a pretty like little thing happening. You can leave it. You don't have to go in and and uh, and bother it. Now I'm thinking I want to wipe some of that out. And what I do is I just wipe. This is a very thirsty brush. It's a faux squirrel. All my brushes are cruelty free. Uh, and since it's really absorbent, I can wipe it off and I can go in and drink up some of that extra paint and get a you know light something up if I want to. Without it shouldn't leave uh, backgrounds if you're on cotton paper. And I might actually go back in here. Add a little bit more pink and I couldn't even let it blur out a little bit. And soften that up. All right, I'm gonna go in here and, oh, I don't like that light right there. Just nudge it. You can just nudge stuff. I want to add a little touch of that over there to kind of carry that color over a little bit. Now let's... The only thing I don't like about this blog is that you get these like just the leftover... Um, it's like the gum, the gummed edge. I'm going right into those flowers. I like those flowers getting kind of faded off. I'm going over these. Oops, I picked up some of that gum edges there. Um, I totally forgot where I was, what I was talking about, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh yeah, those the edges from the watercolor block can be a little annoying. Go in with some of just the blue color. Mix that with some of the Viridian. Well, that's pretty next to that pink too. I 
It's up to you how much like white you want to allow to peak. You know, if you like the sparkle or if you like it a little bit more soft. I love to see what the paint does on its own when you just kind of let it mingle. It adds some of that opera. This one, be careful not to get muddy. Now, I don't like the harsh edges here, so I'm just going to go around like that. I do think I want some darker tones on the inside, so I'm going to go in with that Crimson Lake. A little of the Opera. I think I want to add some leaves in too, but I think this brush is going to be too thirsty, so I'm going to go in with my dagger brush, and I'm going to use paint that is really, um, really pasty, meaning I'm take, going to take it right off the pan. Uh, I think I'll do the olive, because that's closest to the color I want, and I won't have to add a bunch of water to it, so I'm just lifting it right off the pan, so it's like pretty thick, and I'm just going to make some leaves. It might be a little dark for this though. Now that I'm seeing it. Hmm. Maybe not. They are going to blur because this is very wet still. This is such a bright composition. I think, I think that maybe I should let this dry and then go in and add any other details that I want. I think I'll maybe make that one a little bit bigger. I think that's probably a good good idea because I don't think there's too much more I want to do in this wet and wet layer. I'm going to blot like any of these. Well, maybe not. I was thinking if they have that Sometimes you get like this drop of paint at the end of the leaf and I just want to blot that. I think one other thing I want to do is I really love that kind of Iridian color. I think I want to splash some of that on there while it's still wet and then I'll get like kind of a pretty almost like a spray. It might even look like a spray of baby. Actually, I wonder if I did white if I would get like kind of like a baby's breath effect. So let me try that because why not? I mean I'm using like neon paint in here. It's not like I'm expecting this to last, you know, 100 years. I'm getting a really puddly uh, mix of white with my biggest round. This is a number 12 round in my set, but honestly, it's really big. I would say it's more like a 16. I think it's part of just like having to translate sizes to millimeters because <laughs> I give it all the information I'd give to them in millimeters. But anyways, I just wanted to let you know. And you could do some salt on here if you wanted to as well. I don't think I will. And now what I'm going to do with this big brush is we're going to drink up any paint we don't want. So 
So if there's anything that you don't like where those white splashes went, just kind of drink it up with your brush, wipe it on paper towel, go back, do that. And then um, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll add a few details and finish it up. All right, it's the next day. I let everything dry. Most of my spatter is just kind of like um, dissolved into the background, but I do like the misty, hazy look that I have here. Uh, I think I'm just going to start filling in with some leaves, just kind of overlapping a bit. I'll use both the, um, the dagger and the round for this. I think I'll start in with maybe some just some pale kind of teal leaves in the background. Um, I do have my palette set out a little weirdly because of this set is, is uh, kind of big and I have it over a couple different palettes here. So I'm going to do the Viridian and I'm going to add a little bit of, um, it's kind of like a cerulean blue color to it. And I want it liquid enough that I'll be able to just do some really, um, some really easy kind of, uh, kind of leaves. Actually, I'll start with a liner and do kind of like a, uh, uh, do like maybe a little, just kind of a stump of the leaves just to kind of give me a place to start from. And then I'm just going to do some really easy, just press and lift. Leaves like that. I'm going to turn it. Remember, pull towards you, put the, pull towards your dominant hand. The more you press, the bigger your leaves will be. And you can go in there if you need to go in there and round things out. This is a pretty big, um, it's a pretty big brush for this. We'll do another little stem with the liner. And you could do it with the, you could do it with the big round as well. You just might get a little more paint than you bargained for because this holds a lot more paint than the liner. That's why I designed the liner there to have the firmness of a, um, a tackle on but to hold le a little less so that you can get those fine lines because it's not going to overfeed. I want the last leaf in the sprig to just reach the outside of the um, of the paper round. Oops, I didn't lift very well. I adjust that a little bit. I think I like that. Oh, do I want to sneak one more in there? I'm not sure. I'll hold off on that. Uh, let's see, where else? Maybe I'll put one right here. Again, I'll go in with my liner and get a razor sharp little, little wisp. Press and lift. If it gets a little funky, just fill in. Hmm, now let's see. Is there any other place? I kind of like the th having three of those. I think that looks kind of nice and it's kind of balanced out pretty well. Um, I think I'll also do maybe some little sprigs. Let's see. Maybe I'll, or I could just take the olive color. We use that quite a bit. And maybe just do... Just some little, just some little stems to make sense of the um, unruly flowers there. Oh, 
All right, and I feel like I need a little more definition. Maybe have a few defined, defined leaves. Um, hmm. Let's see. Do I want to do that with a dagger? Maybe I think that might be a good, a good option. Um, I'm debating whether I want to mix my own green for this. I think I will because. And let me just show you what I'm going to do for a green mix. I think I'll do um, Viridian. You can see the paint's kind of coming apart there. This is that, uh, I don't know if I mentioned I probably mentioned it. It's the Paul Rubens new opaque water watercolor, which is kind of like a watercolor gouache hybrid. This is a little bit brighter than the olive color. There we go. Maybe I'll dip the tip in the olive. All right. I'm not going to worry about being... exactly on top of the other leaves. And in fact, I think I'll make them a little bit fatter, kind of like, uh, give it kind of like two lobes like you would with a flat brush. Leave a little gap in the center for a little bit of a, um, like a vein. If you do want to add some more color, a little more shadow up next to the flower, you can do that. Do the Viridian and Olive. You don't have to, um, be too defined with it. Let's see if I can pull that around. Maybe even pull us the center vein on that one. I need something right there as well. All right, I like the idea of putting the baby's breath in. So what I think I'm gonna do is take advantage of the white paint. I'm gonna take the liner and take some brown. I think I'll just take some like I feel like I'm juggling palettes. I feel like I'm doing a shell game with palettes. Uh, I'm going to take some of the Burnt Umber. I want to mix it in with some brown. Maybe a little Burnt Sienna too. There, I like that color. I like to mix the colors I've already used because it helps um, helps cross pollinate the uh, the design a little bit. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna put little little um, I'm just gonna put some little like branches where I think I would like them. Uh, kind of places where I don't feel like I have enough definition. 
And then I can go in with the white. Now you can squeeze fresh white from the tube. Um, I'm gonna see how well this white that's on my palette like dissolves back down. It seems like it's dissolving down really well. Hopefully it's not too watery. And I'm just gonna use my number eight round and I'll just have to work quickly because that will that is gonna hold a lot of paint. So if I go slow, I'm gonna end up with uh, blobs that are way too big. You can see my brush, see how it's got a lot of paint in there. And then I'm just gonna do little little dabs. I'm gonna overlap stuff. Don't worry about like just put the spray of flowers, uh, flower buds where you think they should go. They're just little dots and it's gonna add almost like a lacy overlay, which is I think really pretty. Hopefully it stays this opaque. I don't know. This is like the um my second painting with this particular paint. I'm still not sure what I think about it, to be honest. I don't know if I recommend it or not. Um, I'm like, I just need to use it in a few different ways to see. That's why it takes so long for me to get a review done. A new product will come out, even if I've had an advance on it. Um, I might be one of the last people to get their reviews out because it's like, no, I gotta be sure uh, on my opinion because I don't want to say a product is great if there's flaws with it and I don't want to like also you know say a product is rubbish if it's if I just don't understand how it should be used. Oh I really like the the effect I think that brings a lot of the daintiness back having that that baby's breath there and I like how when you you unify by clustering all this and by overlapping, it unifies. Now, I love that little like, bit of granulation there with that opera pink, so I don't wanna cover that up. One thing I'll tell you about this paint, though, is that there are a lot of um, weird pigments in use, uh, uncustomary ones. I'm gonna go over the roses a bit, because you know how baby's breath just kind of like floofs out here and there in a bouquet, I love that. Um, so I wouldn't trust it to be light fast, so this would be just kind of like a little fun like painting, but nothing I would like <laughs> want to say is gonna last forever. You can add in some more branches too if you need to, but just keep in mind your brain will put in a lot of that information. You don't have to have a branch to everything. And if you wanna do some spattering, I think I do wanna do a little bit of spattering here. I think I'll switch to the um, to the larger brush and I'm gonna close my, my laptop's open in front of me. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna close that up because <laughs> uh, I don't want to cover it with paint. <laughs> so I'm using this brush here because it is the faux squirrel. It's very absorbent. It's going to hold a lot more paint. Now, if you're at home, you might want to just save an old cardboard box and use that for this technique. I, I just think I could get some nice random. effects with it. Yeah, I like that. I don't want to go overboard with it. So now I'm going to let this dry and then we, when we come back you can see how it all turned out. All right, let's take a look at the final painting here. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Um, it's kind of fun to design in a circle because then you've got, it's, you know, you're not having everything come out from one direction, you're kind of having everything come out from the center in out into every direction. Um, and I think it's just kind of a fun way to try something different. Like I said, this painting is is gonna fade if I hang it up in sunlight, but sometimes, you know, it makes you take a lot of the pressure off and allows you to have fun and just, uh, and play with your materials. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope it gives you some ideas for using your cat's tongue brushes and any other brushes you have hanging around. If you have my set of brushes, that's what we use today. Um, and I hope you are enjoying them and I'll put a link to those down below if you want to check it out. I'll also link to these paints I used and I will link to my watercolor floral workshop, which is, uh, 50, uh, no, uh, I have a coupon code for it. For 30% off if you want to check it out, um, that is in the video description too. I hope you enjoyed painting along with me, and until next time, happy crafting. Bye!